Hello, it's Greg Brzezinski for Beer Brand Alliance. We're back for part two of Hollywood Beards. These are guys that actually, by technical standards, don't have the best beards in Hollywood, but they are guys who routinely rock beards. Let's take a look at their beards, analyze, or really just look at them and see why they wear them. And is there anything they could do to improve them? But mostly, I wanna show you these as guys who wear beards unabashedly. Let's start with Ashton Kutcher. You can actually see here in this um, before picture, before growing a beard, he is often mostly seen shaved. But you can actually see that he has quite the patchy beard and yet he goes ahead and grows a beard. He has a characteristic shape in the front where his beard doesn't connect or go up to the upper, uh, to his lower lip, which as we know is more of a beard pattern than it is considered a patchy beard. But you can see on the side of his beard that he has some areas of compromise where it's not quite so thick, um, but you can actually see that when he grows a beard, it's a great look. And it's actually a look that I think is categorized by the late uh, teens and early 20s. A lot of guys are wearing beards today. And so in the past, if you had a great beard, you were more apt to wear a beard. Nowadays, guys have more freedom to wear beards. And so you're seeing guys of all types of beards, whether it be patchy to completely mountain man full which I think is fantastic. We've gotten to the point where beards can be accepted no matter what shape they are. But you can see when Ashton grows his beard in a little thicker, it can cover up some of those parts. Is it ever gonna cover up the areas where he has no hair? Obviously not. He would have to grow his mustache particularly long in order to do that. But when he grows a tighter beard, and in his case, his beard being slightly longer benefits, and it's pretty much similar to mine, when he grows his beard slightly longer, he has the opportunity to use some of that hair to cover up some of the areas of compromise. Uh, so it looks good. Moving on, we have someone like James Franco. So in James Franco, you have a similar type of beard. It seems to be a lot of guys will have one part of their beard that is particularly strong. And in this case, his mustache is pretty strong, is, as is his goatee. You also see that he is not, he has the disconnect between his lower lip and the bottom part of his chin scruff. Um, but you can see on the sides of his face that he has a little less hair. So what is the best shape that he should wear? If he wants to make his beard look its best, he can take a look at maybe the side of his beard and say, hey, let's scrap the sides and actually let's wear a goatee, let's wear a Van Dyke because that is the strongest part of his beard. So does it stop James Franco from wearing a beard? If you search him online, he is often sporting a beard and he has a beard that is categorized by many people on the ugly and the poor beard list as a not desirable beard. But I think he looks great with a beard. And so he chooses to wear a beard often. And as we say, so can you. One of the most famous people on this list would be someone like Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp also um, has a fantastic bone structure in his face and great jaw. He looks great with his face shaved. Even as he is approaching 60 years old, he looks good with shaved face. But for the most part, and for some of his roles, as well as his day-to-day -day look, he chooses to wear some type of facial hair. His facial hair on the sides of his face is particularly compromised. You can see this picture with him uh, wearing the glasses, how patchy the side of his beard is. So what does he do for the most part? Yes, you occasionally see him wearing a full beard for him, but it is really one of the most patchy beards in Hollywood. What does he do? He chooses to wear a Van Dyke. He chooses to go for the mustache with the chin piece, and that is typically his, you know, his signature look. And it's a look that we have seen on him since the age of 30 um, up until in his late 50s now. Honestly, I was looking online, there's not a picture of him without wearing some kind of chin hair and mustache um, as a combination in recent history. Actually, for the past dozen years, it's his signature look. And sometimes it's not in the cards for you to wear the full beard. Just in Johnny's case, Johnny has all the money in the world. He could have gotten a beard transplant. He could do X, X, and X. He chooses not to, and he's confident wearing this chin piece. Signature look on him. There's a lot of guys on this list who be whose best look and who choose to wear a partial beard. 
someone like Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville is very similar in that he has some very strong parts on the front of his face, his mustache. He has a very strong tails to his um, more of a horseshoe shaped um, mustache and he has very strong sideburns. Knoxville has taken a lot of grief and it has shown up on several lists of women critiquing beards as saying, oh no, don't do that ever. But I actually think it looks pretty good when Johnny wears signature long sideburns. And so he has a very strong mustache that can go into that biker shape with the sideburns. He often chooses to say, I'm not gonna wear a full beard because literally I can't grow a full beard. Once again, a partial beard that both represents a look for him, but also works with the best facial hair that he has. I think it's great we're in the um, early 20s here and people are allowed to be more expressive of their individuality. And a lot of times when that comes to wearing a beard, you can wear those partial beard styles with gusto. Let's look at some guys who have characteristically full beards, full like beards, but have some areas of compromise, yet they often wear a beard. Once again, some of these beards might be for a role, but some of these guys just grow these beards because they want to. One of the most famous guys for doing that and with a devil may care attitude would be someone like Brad Pitt. Of course, Brad Pitt, don't need no beard to be looking good. He is a guy who will just grow a beard. It's often for a role, but he has grown beards over the years for no reason when he's offset in between jobs. His attitude with growing a beard is devil may care. I, and I don't care. And so Brad Pitt will grow a beard. He often grows this big beard, seemingly ungroomed. He will often grow the strong part of his beard, which is the chin piece of his beard into a goatee. Now, a lot of times he will grow this goatee because the sides of his cheeks are the areas on his face that are not as follically populated as say his mustache and his chin piece. A lot of guys will say, well, that's great if you look like Brad Pitt. And that's one of the things that might happen. Whether you're famous or not, you know, good looking people can get away with looking disheveled or not caring as much about their hair or in this case, not caring so much about their beard. But your everyday guy on the street is going to have to probably take a little more care. And especially if you have a job that takes you into an office, that takes you into sales, that takes you in front of people all the time, we often want to encourage guys to do a little more grooming on his beard. And in, in Brad's case, you know, you can wear that scruffy goat, which I think actually looks kind of cool, but it's a question of adding in maybe some product to it, taking some styling paste to it, trimming up the bottom, making it more blunt. You know, there's some options there that will take this seemingly scruffy beard and turning it into really a beard that would draw attention to himself without necessarily drawing attention to the fact that his beard looks a mess. I think we're getting a little lax. You know, we're getting, we get awfully laxed in the way we dress. We get awfully laxed in the way we um, present our hair and our facial beards and our facial hair. And so I'm just encouraging guys to maybe, you know, dial it up a little bit. So someone else on the list uh, who is known for having a beard and uh, known for showing up often on the good, bad, and ugly side of the, <laughs> of the evaluations of beard is someone like Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is often seen with a beard for several of his roles. He's, she, he's seen smooth-faced often, but he often chooses to wear a beard. And he has a characteristic uh, low uh, position of his um, goatee on the front of his chin. And he has a little less uh, hair on the sides compared to the hair on his chin. So what does um, he do? Yeah, he grows a full beard sometimes. Here's a great picture of Tom with a full beard. But often he takes advantage of the strong suit of his beard, which is really his epic mustache. He has a fantastic mustache and he has a heavy concentration of hair, albeit low, on his chin. He often wears a goatee Van Dyke. Um, he wears this Van Dyke on his face. And you can see that sometimes where he'll wear the Van Dyke and add scruff to the sides. He's a guy that actually doesn't do a lot of tight grooming, but if he's going to do any grooming, he's going to call attention to the strong suit of his beard, which is really the Van Dyke. A lot of guys seem to have that. A lot of guys seem to be able to grow more than not 
mustaches or some kind of chin hair? Is that the strong suit of your beard in which you're going to play that up? You can be like Tom Hardy and play up the Van Dyke portion of your beard. Chris Pratt has a, I would say, a typical beard. Yeah, a lot of guys have fantastic beards. A lot of guys are really lacking. But when I look at Chris Pratt, I see a beard that I see often on, especially guys in their early mid 20s, uh, approaching 30 years old. Chris Pratt's probably in his 30s now. You can actually see very low on the front that characteristic empty spot below the lip. And you can see on the sides that he has some spots. He has some missing hair here. His mustache doesn't connect. But you know what? I think it looks good. Now, does it look good? Because once again, Chris Pratt's a good looking guy. Or uh, would you appreciate this beard on a guy who didn't look as good? So in his case, if he wanted to make this beard look better, and you, you see him doing this often, is growing a little more hair. That kind of linear patch here. I've seen him wear a strong sideburn following up on that line, but I've also seen him, you can see in this picture, of him growing a little more hair in order to cover up some of the patchy spots on his beard. So you see Chris Pratt working what he has. And so I'm gonna finish on him because he represents what a lot of guys have, a beard that is not perfect. It doesn't stop him because he has some patchy areas or because he has a low chin piece um, from wearing a beard. He often wears a beard. What I think this goes to show is that you too can wear a beard that's not perfect and that you can figure out what the strong suit in your beard like many of these celebrities have, whether it be strong sideburns, whether it be a strong mustache or a Van Dyke. Figure out on your face what the strong piece is and you can wear a partial beard to set that piece off. Or in the case of someone like Chris Pratt, Go ahead and wear uniform growth, but maybe add a little length to it. I hope that this encourages you that yes, you too can be wearing a beard that many in the past would see as imperfect, but now a lot of people see as a beard, which I think is fantastic. Until we meet again. What is going on? Beard Man Founder here, and I want to talk to you guys about styling picks. What is the styling paste? It is a styling product. You use it on your hair or you use it on your beard. So that means you're going to tame your beard, you're gonna tame your hair, and uh, it's gonna give you a satin finish.